My name is Charles Smith. I teach here at Caldwell Community College. Today we're going to assemble a drum set from a couple of boxes. Now you might be buying a drum set from somebody. It might be off of a showroom floor. It's probably sitting there. You might get it home and go, I don't remember at all where anything goes. Or again, you might be buying it from a couple of boxes here from an online retailer. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get everything out of the box, we're going to set it up, and we're going to talk about some of the do's and don'ts as far as setting up the drum set. The first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to get everything out of the box. Now hopefully the retailer is giving you some kind of list of all the things that should be expected in these boxes. If they haven't, you should ask them for one. So I'm going to start pulling everything out and we'll get started. Okay, so now we got everything out of the boxes. We got the boxes out of the way, which is nice. We don't have much trash at this point. We're going to have more because we're going to uh, start to take these things out of the wrappers. So you should see um, in any drum set, obviously the drums that we have here, that's going to be the most basic type of drum set you're going to have. Not every drum set package includes things beyond the drums themselves. So we have the drums, we have here in boxes the hardware. These are the stands that are going to hold up all the various drums and cymbals that we have in this set. And then lastly, it's down here way on the floor, there is a set of cymbals that we have included with this particular drum set. So not all drum sets, again, uh, include cymbals. In fact, it's pretty rare that they do. But in this particular case, the drum set that's been purchased includes the drums, the hardware, and the cymbals, all in one nice neat little price. So now what we're going to do um, is to take inventory like I talked about before. So if there's no uh, listing that's been provided to you, do contact your retailer and make sure that they have specified exactly what should be a part of this package that's been delivered to you. So now what we're going to do is just start taking some of the wrapper off of this, uh, wrappers off of this stuff and we'll start to put this set together. Okay, so we've gotten uh, all the boxes uh, opened up. We've taken the wrapper off, most everything that we see here. Now in this case, uh, this floor tom, uh, the hoops are here and they're attached. So uh, that's just temporary. So it's not meant to be that way. It's just shipped that way. So I'm going to go through here, make sure I take these out, and be careful about where you lay these lugs because it's really easy to misplace them. I'm gonna set them on top of this tom-tom and then we'll start to take the rest of these out really quickly so again we're just doing this because this drum set was shipped this way and we'll take that out we'll do the same
one more to go. Holding this in place. And by the way, what I'm using right now is a drum key. And really pretty much every manufacturer when they ship a drum set is going to include one of these drum keys. And you do want to use this. You don't want to just go to your toolbox and grab a, a ratchet set. That can be kind of a dangerous thing with the drum set. So try to avoid that. Do you want to use the drum key? So now I can take all this stuff apart. Now I can get to the hoops, which is fantastic because look, there's an assembly manual, uh, which is, is awesome. So this will guide you through the process that we're going to go through today. So keep that handy. So what we'll do now is I'll just kind of leave these hoops here for this floor tom. Let's just talk about the components that we see here, the drums. So first of all, we have the bass drum here. You can see here are the hoops. We're going to have to put that together here in just a moment with the heads that we see here. You can see that the snare drum, we call it snare drum because of the snares here, that's already assembled. So there's not a lot we're going to have to do there. So I'll just place that over to the side. Same thing here with the tom-toms. I'm not going to pick those up just now. But those were fully assembled. So that's great. They already have the heads on them. Uh, so we won't have to worry about that. Those two tom-toms will eventually go on top of this bass drum. And then this that we have here is the floor tom. And it's going to be held up by these floor tom legs that we see out here to the side. So we'll go through that process and I'm going to start with assembling this bass drum. Before I do that, there happens to be a box here that says assembly parts, okay? So in this case, it's going to give us all the things that we need to put these heads on this bass drum and also to place the heads on this floor tom. So there are actually several parts that are in here, one of which happens to be the tom-tom holder. So once we get this bass drum set up, this is what is going to uh, support these two tom-toms that we have over here. So we're just going to put that over to the side. That'll come a little bit later. Also in this box, we've got a couple of what we call bass drum spurs. Now, on this drum, you'll see that there are a couple spots on the side where these bass drum spurs will go. And that's what keeps the bass drum from wobbling from side to side. So again, we're going to hold on to those. We'll use those in just a moment. Inside this box, I promised there would be a tuning key. And if I open this up, you'll be able to see it a little more clearly. But this is a drum key. And this is definitely what you want to use in your assembly process. So again, we'll put that over to the side. Then we've got a couple of packs of lugs. Now these longer lugs are designed for the bass drum. It's a little bit bigger. And there's a little more distance between the bearing edge of the head and where this lug should go. So that's what we're actually going to use first. These shorter lugs are designed for the floor tom that we're going to have to assemble here in just a moment. So I'm going to place them over here. Now, let's get some of the trash out of the way and we'll start assembling this bass drum. So there are a couple of different heads here. We have the front head which has the logo on it. That's what's going to be facing the audience and then we have this clear head which is the side we'll actually be playing. So, I'm going to set that off to the side for just a moment when we look at this bass drum. I can tell the front of the bass drum because you'll see the spurs are up towards the front. And again, those spurs keep the drum from wobbling. They also keep the drum from moving if you happen to be a pretty heavy hitter. So, I'm just going to set this down front side up and I'm going to drop this head on top. Now, what's the top of the bass drum? That's where the tom-tom mount goes, okay? That's where we'll place that in just a few moments. So usually, if this is the top, we're probably going to put the logo up towards the top. It really doesn't matter where this logo is because the bass drum will not sound any different. It's purely an aesthetic thing. So I got the top here. I'm going to place it right here and kind of use these uh, particular lug casings to kind of center it again. It's all an aesthetic thing. No, uh, no difference in sound quality if you turn this thing on its side. It doesn't matter at all. Now we're going to take one of these hoops, and um, this particular manufacturer uh, does not have separate claws that grab the hoop. In fact, uh, you can see there are holes here. It's, it's a plastic hoop, 
And so we don't have to worry about uh, at all uh, those claws, which is, which is a pretty great thing. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to place this hoop over the head. And then what we're going to try to do is if you see the holes that are here, we're just going to try to line them up here with the lug casings. So we'll do that now. Yeah, pretty close. We can scoot it around if we have to. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our bass drum lugs that we have here. And there should be, in this particular drum set, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the other side doubled, so that's 16. So we should have 16 of these in the pack. If you don't have 16 in the pack, uh, assuming you have 16 lugs, contact the retailer. All right, now in each of these lugs, and I'll just kind of bring this up a little bit uh, closer, each of these lugs have a washer on them. And you want to make sure that that washer uh, is intact. Um, that's a, a very fine thing. You want to make sure those washers are there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, threading these in, and we'll just start here. Now all I'm going to do is get these kind of hand started. I'm not even going to pull them all the way down just yet. And I'm just going to go around the drum. Try to make this straight, make the alignment straight if at all possible. And we're just going to keep going around until we got all the lugs in. Now at this stage of the game, you really don't have to worry about which one do I bring down first. In other words, do I have to go in equal and opposite like a tire? Nah, not necessary, OK? Um, but later on, when we start to put some tension on this head, we'll want to make sure that we do the equal and opposite thing like we do with changing a tire. It's really not a lot different there. So just a couple more here that we have left. Go to the top. And one more. Now once you have all these in place, Again, I don't have any tension on the head at all. But again, just going to check around, make sure everything's straight the way I want it. We can move it around later if we had to. We just have to take the tension off the head. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to uh, pull these lugs in. And I'm only going to go to the point where I start to meet some resistance. And that's as far as I'm going to go. And at this point, I'm probably going to go equal and opposite kind of like a tire. All right, very good. And that's basically it. Now what I'm going to do, in this particular case, um, there's some kind of insert in the lug that's keeping this thing from uh, going all the way in. I'm feeling a little bit of resistance there, but it's OK. I can tell right now that this thing's not all the way down. So it's still wobbly, OK? So I still don't have any tension on the head. Uh, so what I may have to do is I may have to grab one of these drum keys and just start to get it just down to the point, just where it starts to touch. And I don't want to go any farther than that. And I'm going to start doing that again in an equal and opposite fashion, just like you were dealing with a tire. Okay, so we've gotten all these lugs down just to the point where they're touching the hoop. So we're in good shape here. Now, if you happen to have an extra drum key at this point, it can be helpful. Um, and I happen to bring along an extra one. Not all drum sets uh, will include two keys. Uh, but in this particular case, since I have the extra one, I'm going to do this. What I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to go opposite. And I'm just going to start to turn, maybe about a good full turn. Again, I'm going to go opposite. And I'm going to get a good equal turn. 
And then I'm going to go into this position. And again, we're all about trying to be equal here. Um, and so that's the idea. And you can see we're already getting some kind of tone out of this bass drum. Now this front head is probably going to be a little bit looser than the side that we're going to be playing on with the bass drum pedal. So for right now, I'm probably going to leave this one as it is. Maybe a little more. Maybe just a little bit more here. And again, I'm going to go uh, equal and opposite. Maybe just a fuzz more, because this is still pretty flabby at this point. So we're going to put a little more tension on this head. All right, by the way, whenever you put on a head, you're going to notice, you're going to hear some creaks and some pops. That is OK. Uh, what's happening is, is the head's kind of getting adjusted to the shell. The shell is getting adjusted to the head. And so that's OK. So don't be alarmed if you start to hear some creaks and pops. That's perfectly normal at this stage of the game. All right, so that's got the front head on. And again, a little higher now. Now we're going to flip this thing over. We're going to take care of the uh, what we call the batter side head. This is the side we actually play with the bass drum. And again, there's a logo here at the bottom. If you prefer to have that logo towards the bottom of the bass drum, and again, I'm telling the bottom of the bass drum because there's my tom-tom mount. If you want to put that at the bottom, that's fine. Again, it doesn't matter where you place this. It's all matters of, of aesthetics. All right, got the hoop. Now, I didn't pay much attention to this before, but it is kind of important here on this particular bass drum. I don't know if you can zoom in to see this or not, but there's a spot here in this bass drum that's de designed specifically for the toe clamp of the bass drum pedal. It's kind of notched out a little bit. It's a little bit thinner right here. Probably really hard to see with the camera. But I do want to make sure that that notched out part is at the bottom of the bass drum because, again, that's where the bass drum pedal is going to attach. Okay. So this is the bottom of the bass drum. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before, and I'm just going to kind of look around, kind of uh, eyeball it a little bit, and we're going to start placing these lugs in here. We're going to bring these down a little bit. And again, at this stage, when we start placing the lugs into the drum, we don't have to worry about going equal and opposite and all that kind of stuff. We kind of reserve that whole thing for when we're really putting tension on the head. We're not doing that yet. All right, so we'll keep going around. Four more to go. And while you're doing this, you may notice that there may be some grease around the, the lugs themselves, or if you start to uh, hand tighten these things here. You may notice some, there's some grease inside and that's okay. That's designed uh, to make sure that these things will turn freely in the future and that is okay. So, you, But you might want to have a um, paper towel around just so you don't wind up getting grease over everything. All right, last one. And again, making sure that each of these has the washer. That's going to be a feature of every drum that we talk about. Every one of these drums, whether it's pre-assembled or the ones we have to assemble, they're all going to have those washers there. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to check in to see if we're close to the hoop. And again, these are wobbling a little bit, so they really aren't. And I'm going to grab my drum keys. Again. Okay, so we've gotten all these lugs in. Again, I'm just trying to get this to the point where I don't have any wobble. So that way I know it's, it's seated with the hoop. So I'm just going to start to turn this until I really don't feel any more wobble. Okay, so we're in good shape there. And now I'm going to start to go equal and opposite. And we'll just basically repeat this process with every lug. We're just getting the lug down to the point where we barely have any tension on the head, just to where it's meeting the hoop. And we will work in an equal and opposite fashion at this point. Well, pretty much opposite, not always. Obviously, I just use an adjacent lug. All right, so we take care of that. That's good. That's good. 
and that's good. Now the reason why I'm being uh, so careful about this at this point is you want to make sure the head tension is even regardless of which leg you're, you're working with. And so the only way that we can really assure ourselves that the tension's e even in every one of the lugs is to start from this base, which means that we're just getting the lugs to the point of touching the hoop. That's a good kind of ground zero to start from. So I've done that. Again, I happen to have my two drum keys. And I'm going to start kind of the same way I did before. Good full turn, working equal and opposite, or not. <laughs> if you've not dealt with drum keys before, you're going to drop them a lot. I can guarantee it. All right, so again, equal and opposite. Okay, and again, equal and opposite. One of the things you want to do when you're working with the drum head is just put a little tension on it first and then check it. In other words, you don't want to go to town cranking down all these lugs and then discover, oh wow, this bass drum sounds a lot higher pitched than I intended it to be. For some people, that might be the sound that you're looking for, and that's fine. Um, you may want to go a little bit higher, and if you do, again, we're just going to work in equal and opposite fashion. I'm just going to try like maybe a quarter turn. And again, I'm starting to hear those crackles at this point, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just, again, the head kind of stretching and getting used to the shell. Yeah, and I like that sound. I think I'm gonna go with that. Again, you may not want that much tension on your head, and that's something you can play with later. But at least we have the bass drum set up. All right, so now that we've taken care of all of this, it's now time to put these uh, bass drum spurs together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these bass drum spurs. I'm just gonna unwrap them real quick. Sometimes that's easier said than done. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, now some bass drum spurs, you're all, you aren't gonna have to assemble. And in this particular case, you do. It just happens to be the way um, that this particular uh, company, Tama, ships their bass drums. So you have to do a little bit of assembly here on the spur. This happens to use a drum key, and it's all the way in. Usually when the ships, they are. This kind of same drum key you use for all this stuff, same kind of head here. We're just gonna pop this in here until it stops. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this up. Now you don't wanna over tighten this stuff because this kind of metal is really easy to strip out. So you just wanna get a good firm um, uh, tightening there. And then we're gonna take care of this on the other side. So I'll bring this up a little bit so I can get to it a little bit easier. I'll take this out. All the way in. And I got that tight. Now, I'm just going to put this back in place for just a moment um, until I have some other things to do uh, with this bass drum. So we have a fully assembled bass drum, which is great. OK, so now we're going to take care of the floor tom. We're going to assemble that. And uh, we had to kind of detach this from the head. It was temporarily placed a while ago, so we uh, need to uh, take the wrapper off. So. You have a top hoop and a bottom hoop. There is no difference between the top and the bottom hoop. And so we don't really have to worry about which one we use at this stage of the game. I'm just gonna kind of set them off to the side. We're gonna take a look at the floor time. We're gonna talk about what the top and the bottom looks like. We know uh, for a couple of different reasons that this is the bottom. One, these are the mounting points for our floor time legs. And so those are always be at the bottom. So you don't have to worry about that. The other reason why I know this is the top of the head is because the logo is right side up. So that works. So I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to start with the bottom. And we're going to take a look at the heads that we have here. In this particular case, there are two different heads. And you will be able to tell by feel. Typically, 
the head that's going to be on the bottom is thinner. And so when you start to feel this, you'll be able to tell the difference between this thinner head, which is for the bottom, and this thicker head, which is designed for the top. You really don't want to mess those two up. You don't want to mix them um, because this thinner head will dent much more easily. You wouldn't want to place this on the playing side or the top side of the, the tom-tom. So we're going to use this for the bottom. I'm just going to set this over to the side. Again, it does not matter how this is rotated at all. Uh, not going to have any effect on the drum whatsoever. Got the hoop. Pretty straightforward. It's going to go on top there. And again, as I said before, we should have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2 is 12. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And 10, 11, 12. Notice that uh, the lugs that I took off a while ago we're going to need now for this assembly process. So now I'm going to open up this pack of lugs. Again, every one of these lugs has or should have a washer. Okay, So we definitely want to make sure there's a washer there. That's just going to make sure that when we place this uh, in the drum, again, that it freely turns the way we want it to. So we're going to go through the same process that we did for the bass drum. I'm just going to start entering these lugs here and make sure that they're threaded. And so the process we're going to go through right now, same thing we did a while ago. One of the things that you may want to do uh, that I meant to mention when we were assembling the bass drum is this whole drum kit has been packed in styrofoam. And a lot of times you'll have little bitty bits of styrofoam. You might want to just kind of go inside the shell and make sure that you don't have little bits of styrofoam on the inside of the drum, because uh, that can happen uh, when you get a newly shipped drum kit like this. So do a little housekeeping while you're in there. Okay, so we got all the lugs in there. Now at this point, we're gonna go through the same process that we did before. We're gonna get these lugs just to where they're touching the hoop and go no farther so we can have that uh, starting point, that even starting point before we start to apply any tension on the head. Okay, so now we're gonna start tightening these things down again until I don't feel any wobble or really just until they start to touch the hoop, okay? And so we've done that on this side. Again, I'm going to work equal and opposite to ensure that that occurs. Okay. And equal and opposite. And I just kind of use the wiggle method to make sure that I've got this thing just seated on the hoop. I got that there. Now we'll try this side. We'll check it. All right. We're in pretty good shape. So we have a good starting point to where we can start apply, applying tension on this head. Now, I've been using two drum keys, but if you only have one, it's okay. I just find it to be easier to keep up with equal and opposite when I'm using two keys. Um, when I'm replacing heads on timpani, on kettle drums, I do the same thing. So it's kind of a habit that I've developed. All right, so now I'm going to kind of give it a good full turn. Again, kind of working in equal opposite. It's uh, kind of hard to be equal and opposite on this drum because it only has six lugs, unlike the eight lugs we just had on the bass drum. So again, we're working equal and opposite. Now, we already have some kind of uh, uh, tension there on the head. But you notice it has kind of a weird rattle to it. So I definitely I need more tension on this head. So we're going to keep going maybe now working in half turns instead of full turns. We're getting there. Now there's a process of fine tuning uh, a drum head and, and uh, making sure that it is in tune with itself. In other words, you hear the same kind of pitch, the higher low tone at each one of these lug points. I'm not gonna focus so much on that in this particular session um, as that's more of a fine kind of art uh, that we really should cover in a, in a whole separate session, and we'll, we'll definitely do that. But the main thing is right now, I've got at least minimal tension on this head. 
I don't hear any kind of uh, uh, papery kind of sound right now, and so that's kind of the objective. I'm going to, it's pretty low, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, and we're going to take care of the other side. But again, you see here, <laughs> there's some styrofoam. So we just want to kind of make sure, uh, maybe take a paper towel, at least run your hand up in there and make sure that all that styrofoam is out because you don't want that trapped inside the drum. All right, so now we got the top head. We're going to repeat the same process. Again, there's a logo here on this head. It does not matter where that logo is at all. So I wouldn't at all be concerned about that. Hoop goes right on top. Again, we'll just line up the eye holes here. I've got these three leftovers. I'm going to use those. Repeat the same process that we used for the bottom head. Now, I know some people have said before, well, can I just take my power drill and get the attachment that fits this thing and run it on down in there? I wouldn't advise that. Um, it's really easy to just kind of let that go and crank it all the way down. And you can really do some damage, uh, not only to the head, but also the shell. So um, definitely when you're replacing a head, just use a drum key. Don't, don't go for the power tool because you might not like the result. So I would shy away from the power tools. All right, so again, I'm just going around here, getting this to the point where I start to meet the rim. And in some of these cases, um, you may, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but in this case, I'm feeling resistance on this one. And um, it's still not all the way in. And that's just because uh, the way this lug is designed, there's a piece of rubber that's on the inside that's designed to hold this lug together. And, it, and the lug's starting to hit the inside where that piece of rubber is. So that's why it's turning um, in, in a more uh, resistive kind of fashion. So again, I'm going to go around the drum. And I'm going to make sure that I don't have any wiggle. And that's pretty good. And again, I'm going to work this in equal and opposite fashion all the way around. All right. Good. And then the fun part is when you start putting these things together and you can't remember which lug you've touched. But that's OK. I could just go around this drum again, just check to see if everything wiggles. And if it's in good shape, then nothing I have to do there, OK? All right, so now we got this at an even spot where we can start to apply tension to the head. Again, I'm going to work an equal and opposite. And again, I'll start to hear those creaks again, and that's fine. All right, let's see where we're at right now. The, the big thing about putting tension on the heads, again, as I said before with the bass drum, is to start with a little and check and see where you're at. See if you like the tone of the drum, if you like the pitch higher or lower. If you like it a lot lower, you may not need to go any further. That sounded pretty good there. That's pretty low. Um, so I think I'm going to leave that where it's at. We'll save the fine tuning for later. So at this point, we got the bass drum assembled. We got the floor tom assembled and uh, have all the pieces of the drum set. Now, I mentioned before, when you buy a drum set, they refer to it as like a five-piece or a four-piece. What does that mean? Well, it really refers just to the number of drums. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five drums. Uh, so that's what makes this a five-piece. And I know that's always kind of confusing because people start to say, well, what about the cymbals that I have and all the other stands? Are those considered pieces? No, not really. We talk about a five-piece drum set, they're really just referring to the drums. So all this is assembled. The foundation of this drum set is really going to be the bass drum. So again, we have the tom-tom mount, which is going to go into the bass drum. And then these tom-tom uh, -tom arms will face upward. We'll do that in just a second. And then we will attach the tom-toms. We'll place the floor tom legs into the 
uh, floor tom and we'll really start building this drum set. So I'm going to start by taking this bass drum and again the front here and I'm going to move these spurs outward. Now usually there's just one kind of forward facing locking position. So you can see it's kind of forward just a little bit. That's where we want it. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Again, there's a spot there. Now, the goal here with these spurs, again, is to keep the drum from rocking, but also to keep it from moving forward once we start to play it with the pedal. So, what we want to do is we want to kind of check here. We still have wobble. Yes, we do. So we're going to need to do a little bit of adjust, adjusting here uh, on our bass drum spurs. We can do that a couple different ways. The first way in this particular spur design is when we placed them in, we had that spot. So I'm just going to roll this over to the side just a little bit. Okay. And then on the other side, we'll do the same thing probably to about the same degree. Now, in this case, it's probably really hard to see, but there are guidelines, there are little notches in here so you can tell. Um, I go to the first notch on this one, and I go to the first notch on that one. You can eyeball it too, that's fine, that's okay. But the goal here is to ensure that the bass drum is really resting on the spurs, not on the bottom of the bass drum. That'll do two things. One, it'll ensure that these spurs dig into the carpet, but then also it's actually going to improve the tone of the bass drum a little bit. You don't really want the bottom of that drum really resting on the floor. So I can tell right now that this is resting on the spurs. You'll also notice in the spur design that there are rubber tips here, but if we start to twist this in, you'll see that there are some little spikes here. and kind of reveal some spikes. So if you're playing on a carpeted surface, you may want those spikes to dip, in, to dip into the carpet. Now I'm not going to do that today. Um, but you certainly could. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set this up sideways to give you a little bit better perspective of how we're gonna proceed forward. You, of course, you can remove these tags if you want to. If you like them to be there, that's fine too. Whatever you like. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky to get off of there. We gotten this one taken care of almost. Okay, that's got the tag off. Now, let's grab this TomTom -tom mounting arm. Now, in looking at this, it's a little bit confusing. What's the front side? What's the back side? You know, I'm not really sure. Let's just put this thing in there and see what happens. Now, you'll notice that there's a uh, stop lock here. And what that does for you is it ensures that this uh, this particular mounting arm only goes in so far. So if you're having to set up and tear down all the time, that's what the purpose of that stop lock is. So you have a consistent setup every time in case you have to move this drum set. All right, so now we'll move these arms up, kind of get them sort of into position. And I want to talk about one of the most important rules of setting up a drum set. You're always going to see these little uh, wing nuts on this particular particular piece of mounting hardware, you'll see it in all these stands over here. A lot of people want to just go, let me crank that thing down until it doesn't crank anymore. It's a very bad idea uh, because you can actually strip out these wing nuts. So only crank them as far as you need to. And in this particular case, once we place the tom-toms on here, we just want to make sure that uh, there's no further movement. And so that's as tight as we want to go. Now for a uh, right-handed person, the way this is going to work is that the highest floor tom, the smallest one, is going to go on the left side. Highest tom will be right up here. We'll just place that in there like that. Okay, and again, there's a stop lock here, and so that's a good thing for consistent setup. We'll deal with the, uh, the height of all this here in just a moment. Okay, so we've got the tom-toms on there. Now we can start to use this ball joint 
and kind of move things around. In fact, I may decide I want to lower these tom-toms a little bit here in just a moment using uh, that adjustment there. Okay, kind of get them to the same angle more or less. So this thing, I think I want it to go a little bit lower. I don't want these tom-toms to rest on anything, so we don't want to go that low. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this stop lock that we see here. So I'm going to let that loose for just a moment. Make sure you have a good hold of this because this thing's going to come crashing down here in just a second if you don't. Okay, so we're going to move down a little bit. I'm going to tighten that up. All right, so now we have the uh, bass drum into position. We have the tom-toms here on the, the mounting bracket. Um, now we're going to add the floor tom legs here to the floor tom. So now we got the floor tom legs we talked about before. We're going to place those in there. And again, usually when you uh, initially uh, place these, these wing nuts are usually all the way in. So you probably have to back them out a good bit to make them go. And I'm going to go right about there. We can adjust that a little bit later. And we'll take that out. go. All right, one more. Okay. All right, so we're in pretty good shape. We've got a high tom, a medium tom, and then a low tom. And we can adjust these pitches um, as necessary. And again, we'll cover that in a separate tuning video. Uh, talk about that a little more in depth. So we're in good shape with the drums. Now we have the fun of unboxing the big pile of hardware, all the stands that we have. So that's the next thing that we're going to do. So now we've unboxed all the hardware. Now we've got to figure out where all this stuff goes. So I'm going to start with the, the drum throne. In this particular case, got a couple of spots here. Again, whenever we tighten these things up, just want to be sure that you don't tighten them too far. In this case, we happen to have a stop lock that's right up at the top. So I'm going to I'm going to pull that down. And I'll just kind of put it at one point here. We can adjust it a little bit later. And uh, I have that grease all over my hands now which I was not uh, well prepared, but that's okay. I'll just uh, grab a tag here and <laughs> make do. All right, good deal. So now we have the throne in place. This is one place where there is a stop lock and you do wanna make sure that's in place and you do wanna make sure um, that it's snugly uh, set uh, because otherwise you might come crashing down unceremoniously. So that's got the throne. Let's take care of next to the snare drum stand. So here again, we have a bass. Now when you set the bases for these thrones, you'll notice that you could spread this thing way out, but that really is not necessary. Really, you can kind of go in the middle there and that'll be just fine. Again, don't tighten too far so that you ac don't accidentally uh, break something. So, all right, this is the angle adjustment. Now I'm going to set this flat for now and uh, we'll tilt it later if we decide we want to because you can tilt the snare drum a little bit and we'll just get that set up and kind of out of the way. Next we'll deal with this particular cymbal stand. Now some cymbal stands are straight cymbal stands. They don't have a boom arm on them and in this particular case we have uh, a boom arm cymbal stand and we have a straight cymbal stand. So again, I'm just going to spread it out that far. Not necessary to go this far because really all you're doing is taking up space and this cymbal stand is going to be just fine and very stable right here. All right, kind of tightening that just to where it holds, no farther. And again, same thing here. All right, now in this case they ship the boom arm separately so we're going to insert that boom arm and this boom arm is designed so that if you want you can tilt it 
or the boom hides. So if you want to kind of turn this into a straight stand, you can. I'm going to go ahead and let it operate as a boom today. And we'll just again get it sort of tight. We're going to worry with positioning things a little bit later. I really just wanted to make, basically point out that you don't need to spread this out and you don't need to over tighten these uh, adjustments here. Okay, just, just not necessary. All right, I'll do the same thing here with the straight stand. Again, not too far out. And, whoops, place this in here. Okay. There, and there, and we're good. Uh, next, the hi-hat stand, the very last piece. This is a little more, a little more complicated, not that crazy. But again, we're going to spread this out. Now, you'll notice at the bottom of this hi-hat stand, there are some prongs. And there's a place here on the inside of this base that those prongs will go. Now, they have a little piece of plastic there, so I'm going to place those inside so you can see they're inside the receptacles here and what I'm going to do as far as the height of this I'm going to get this down to just to where that bottom touches maybe just a little farther up and the reason why is because we don't want this sitting on the middle and wobbling so we're going to do this right here and believe it or not you know I talked about the spikes that are located in the bottom of this bass drum spur there's actually a spike on the bottom of this hi-hat stand. And again, what that's designed to do is if you're on a piece of carpet and you're playing the hi-hat pedal and you don't want it to travel, you can actually dial that down so the spike sticks out at the bottom. And again, make sure you're doing that on carpet, not on a hardwood surface because it'll scratch it. So we're in good shape there. This is the other piece. Now, right now, um, this particular, uh, and I have to see how this came together, how it was shipped rather, so I kind of had to do some disassembly there. So you have a pull rod, and on the inside of this hi-hat stand, there's a receptacle, there's a nut there, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this pull rod into that receptacle. Now you'll notice that there is a uh, plastic nut here at the top, and what that's designed to do, it's kind of like a lock nut, sort of. So once we get this in there, we're going to make sure that we tighten that nut up against. And what that's going to do is going to keep for this from um, accidentally spinning in reverse while you're playing and, and becoming disconnected. So you definitely want to, if there's a nut there like that, you definitely want to tighten that. This is going to go on top, and you'll see that'll pop right up through here. Again, you've got a stop lock. We can deal with that later. Just give that just a little bit of a tighten, and then we have the hi-hat clutch. So. That's it. We've got all the hardware assembled. We have a bass drum pedal out here. That comes pretty much assembled actually in this particular case. The only thing that they didn't do in this case is they did not attach the spring, and that's fairly common. Just pull that up over there, and now you have a bass drum pedal that does what it's supposed to do. That's the hardware. Throne, snare drum stand, boom stand, straight stand, hi-hat hi -hat stand, and then your bass drum pedal. Now let's put all this stuff together. We're going to put this in position. We're going to add the cymbals to these stands, and uh, we'll have a drum set. So now we're going to take all this hardware, and we're going to decide where it goes here on the drum set. I'm going to start with the bass drum pedal. And again, in this particular case, there was a notched out spot, um, and we made sure that that notched out spot was at the bottom and that was because of this bass drum pedal. You can see there's a toe clamp here, and that's the reason why that's notched out. Not every drum set is gonna have a notched out hoop, so don't be concerned if it's not. It just happens to be this particular manufacturer. That's how they make these. So I'm just gonna kinda lift up, and uh, this is where it's a little bit tricky. That toe clamp may not be uh, very much open, and if it isn't, uh, you'll have to widen it a little bit. Now the wing nut for this, you can't really see, but it's underneath the pedal here. And so we're going to tighten this down just to the point where it stops. And it may take a little ways. And again, any of these adjustments, I can't stress this enough, any of these adjustments, 
just be very careful uh, about how much tension you apply because usually it doesn't take much. All right, so we got the bass drum pedal in place. Okay, got some nice thuds there. Now let's talk about this snare drum. What we're going to do here is drop this right here. Now on this uh, snare drum stand, there's a, it's a telescopic stand, so there's a little uh, nut here at the bottom. And again, we have the, the uh, angle adjustment there. We're just going to place this in the stand. Now be careful, because you see what I did here. There's a little foot here. We don't want this up against this little device here. This is what we call a snare throw off, and it's what brings the snares against the head or off the head. So we just want to make sure that when we place this uh, drum that we don't lay that on top of one of these feet, because that's not good. Now, as far as adjusting this, just to the point where it holds. You don't need to crank that very tight at all. Okay. All right, good spot. Now let's talk about what we're going to do with these cymbal stands. This boom arm, I'm probably going to place over here. Maybe somewhere in this area. Angle this out just a little bit. And that'll be good there. Now we're going to take the straight stand that we had. And, th and there's really no right or wrong here. If you prefer to have the boom over here and the straight over there, that's great. So whatever works for you. Now the hi-hat stand we'll place over here. We're ready to go. We've got everything assembled. And of course, you can remove these tags as you wish. Uh, but the stands are in place. And now it's time to get these cymbals on the stands and we'll have a complete drum set. So the first cymbals I'm gonna place on the stands will be the hi-hats. Uh, we call them hi-hats because, well, they kind of look like hats and they're sort of high. So the idea here is we look at the cymbals and, and this is probably gonna be really hard to tell from the glare, but there is a top hi-hat and then a bottom hi-hat. And in this case, it's, again, it's pr very small, hard to read, but this is labeled hi-hat top, and this is labeled hi-hat bottom. You can also tell because usually the top hi-hat symbol is a little bit thinner than the bottom hi-hat symbol. So we're gonna start by removing this clutch. We're gonna place this here, and then this clutch that we see here. You're gonna see that there are a couple of uh, nuts on this clutch. There are a couple pieces of felt. You always want to make sure that when you're dealing with cymbals, whether they're the hi-hats or the ride cymbal or the crash cymbal, that you always have these felts in place. That's going to protect the cymbal and protect the stand. So, top of the clutch, here's the wing nut. I'm going to place this through here. We're going to make sure that we have another felt on the bottom. And then this nut, and it, it may be hard to tell, but there is a narrow side and a wide side. So there's really only one way that this thing goes on. You want to crank that until it stops, okay? That one you want a good snug tighten. Then you have a couple of uh, other nuts here. They're interlocking. And we're just gonna make sure that that second nut right there is fairly snug against the other one. What that's gonna do is keep these from loosening themselves later on. All right, this goes right down on here. There's your hi-hat. Usually, if you can take your finger, put that in there, maybe, maybe your fist there, something like that, tighten that up. That'll be good, okay? All right, so that takes care of the hi-hat. We can worry about exactly where it's placed here in just a moment. So now we're gonna deal with this smaller crash symbol. Usually you place the crash symbol over near the hi-hat and then the larger ride symbol will place over to the right side. Now in this particular case, um, Tama has a uh, peculiar type of wing nut. In other words, it doesn't twist down like this. It has a push release, which is actually kind of a cool feature because you don't have to twist and twist and twist. Now again, two felts that you see here and then you'll also notice in this uh, stand design, there's a piece of hard plastic. That is super important right there uh, because what that does is it keeps 
uh, this stand from coming into contact metal on metal. So you, you always want to make sure those are in place. If they ever wear out, do replace them because it'll uh, increase the longevity of your cymbals. All right, so we have another felt here. Now, a lot of people, when they start to tighten these things, they put them down as tight as they can, and that keeps the cymbal from moving, which is actually a bad thing. The tighter that you uh, set this, the less freedom the cymbal is allowed, and that can actually cause what are called keyhole cracks here uh, in this cymbal. So you want this cymbal to flop. You don't want it ever to be so tight that it looks like this, right? You want it to have some flop. All right, crash symbol. Now let's talk about the ride symbol. And actually, I'm going to lower the stand just a little bit. Eh, not too much. Same thing. This happens to have a push release. Don't be concerned if yours happens to be the actual wing nut. That's OK, too. Two felts. Again, a protector that we see here. And then we're going to mount that. We're going to place the felt on top. And then again, when you place this back on, make sure that you have some freedom there. Because again, that'll help your symbol. Now, one of the finer points about this boom stand, the feet at the bottom, you want to really make this so that the boom is over one of those feet. And the reason why is because the weight on this stand is pushing this direction. So you want the maximum amount of support down here at the bottom. So now you can see that my boom is directly over one of these legs. Okay. Now, we got the symbols placed. We can make fine adjustments about where everything is here in just a second. The very last thing that I'm going to do is pull the throne that we assembled a while ago up to the drum set, and we'll play some music. So we got the drum set together. Now let's play a little bit. 